Last week, we covered the first part of the trip, which was from Bow Lake up to Bow Hut. And I kept that separate because that's one trip that even if you don't have any mountaineering experience, but you're a good hiker, it's a place you can take your kids, get them into the Alpine. So if you don't remember, that came from Bow Lake all the way to Bow Hut. The part that we're going to cover today is from there on day two, getting to Pato Hut. And then after Pato Hut, we're going to go down the glacier and cross down by the lake and Heartbreak Hill all the way out to the highway. All right, we've zoomed in here a little bit and I've got Bow Hut at the bottom and Pato at the top. And this is a line that I suggest you taking if you're going to cross this ice field. The last time, the last 10 times I did it, there were no crevasses along this line. Uh, that doesn't mean there isn't any glaciers change, but I seriously doubt that there would be any. So when you leave Bow Hut, you kind of go up along the onion and then I peel out left and I avoid this sort of uh, elevation drop where the glaciers drop. And I'm aiming for Mount Thompson's shoulder. And then from there, you're in easy street and then you're right down to the hut. Okay, so I'll walk you through what you can expect here. This is Bow Hut and you're gonna be moving from the hut back here and eventually get onto this glacier here. So as soon as you're out of the hut, you kind of pick up these faint alpine trails. This is what it looks like. The hut is just down behind us, so probably about five, 10 minute walk uh, from this location. And if you were coming up, you would have come up from the hut this way, get a number of trails. You can either gain the ice here, or if there's a lot of snow, it might be to your advantage to get on down here. Otherwise, you can stay on the rock. And if you're going to climb the onion skin, you can scramble up on rock all the way and uh, not have to worry about getting onto the ice. However, these young mountaineers didn't seem to have too much of a problem. This is taking the, uh, when it's got more snow on it, it's at your advantage to probably get on the snow earlier and start traveling. And what you're aiming for is the shoulder of Mount Thompson here, right? So I contour around a bit without going into this, all the way down in this basin. But I like to end up right here and there'll be a couple of rock islands that are also visible. Those are your landmarks. This is what it looks like when you're halfway out onto the glacier. Looking back towards the onion. There's the onion behind these folks, so we're just probably five minutes out on the glacier. Midway. There it gives you a scale. There's a mountaineering group down there, training program going on. And uh, look at the size of them and the scale of the glacier that you're on. From the shoulder of Mount Thompson, you can use these rock islands to guide you down. Uh, you're 40 minutes from the hut. Be careful exiting the glacier because it gets overhung and there's fast moving water underneath it sometimes. Once you get off the ice, you can pick up these faint trails and then uh, eventually they'll lead you to the hut, which we see in the skyline there. The hut itself is well equipped. It's got uh, stoves, gas line lights, um, it's well insulated, so even in the summertime, it's quite warm. You get a few bodies in there and some cooking. Uh, the temperature does get, you actually have to vent it out. It's too warm to sleep in. And it's comfortable enough. There's, you know, nice big windows up front and people enjoy playing cards and socializing. You can see the bunks in the background. And good food and some wine never hurts.
the following day you're going to end up walking out onto this glacier right and so this is where we want to be this is the compression area down below us here and we went down our hut was up over here we came down walked out and then came down the center of the glacier so as you can see it's fairly benign how this year anyhow has been the last few years this is at the steeper part of it so it's got these leg breaker crevasses you know nothing uh, too scary but and easy to manage At this point is where the glacier meets the rock and it can be quite muddy this these where it's water saturated so uh you have to be careful there but uh this is the point where you take your crampons off this is the glacier that you just came down kind of walked out this way and then down to where we are and when i say muddy take a look at her feet um yeah it was kind of quick sandy-ish she was our crash test bunny And you can look back, there's the glacier, and you just pick up some faint trails. Um, just, and you'll see they just get a little better. Wherever it seems like, you know, walking makes sense, uh, you'll find one of these trails. The, glacia the glaciation station is up here, and that's where you're heading for. So your trails are just kind of along here, and you'll pick them up and work them up here. And I think it, remember it coming in here. This is the top of the moraine looking down, right? The upper section of it. You can see the faint trail is starting to pick up in here. And there's the mighty moraine itself. So you come off of this moraine, you come down onto this moraine here. And that's looking back. Here's one of your big problems is this cauldron creek. Um, depending, it's kind of high flow right now, and it can be tricky to get across, so you kind of have to work these sections, so you can see how you would go up here, jump over, go up and jump over again. But uh, this is all depending on how much rain you've had recently, how much snow there is to melt, how hot it's been. Looking back at the moraine, we can see it way back up here, right? How we came down, and then you stay high, come down, and eventually work down onto the flats till you get to this and you're walk you got a faint trail on the river the north side of the river so there's the moraine you came down you're still on the same side of the river and this trail will lead you out to the gravel flats and then you just find your best way across those uh, it's braided so most of the time you can get by without getting your feet wet not always though then Heartbreak Hill is the last section of uh, the trail. And that's just before getting to the highway. So it's a thousand foot climb as if you need that. But at least you're not carrying very much stuff at this point. And welcome to the real world again. And you, you know, you just crossed all this ice and snow and God knows what mountain horrors you survived. And then here you are, you're joining the horde. <laughs> 